We're talking Friday night college football on the Our Lads Football Network, Our Lads Football YouTube channel. And Friday night football, college football, there are four games on tap. So we're going to quickly go over those games and uh, talk a little bit about whether or not it's a game in particular that we like. Uh, but either way, uh, we're going to let you know what we think about the game, go over the latest odds, any injury updates, and more. Welcome in Mark Lawrence of Playbook Experts YouTube channel and the PlaybookSports.com website. How's it going, Mark? I'm doing just terrific, Greg. How are you doing? Doing good. Uh, last week, uh, college football was a lot of fun. As a matter of fact, the last several weeks has really been a lot of fun. And these Friday nights have been really good as well. Um, I'm, I don't know if it's an accident or deliberate, uh, not that we've had like these major games, but I just like the fact that the games have been like meaningful. Like there's yeah. something to the games that make it interesting. Not, you know, it's not like one of these Tuesday or Wednesday Mac or, or conference USA, uh, matchups. Uh, so I like that. And, uh, I think it adds, uh, to the, you know, not because I know there's a lot of you know gamblers out there that this or even handicappers and hey anything anything to wager on, especially if it's football, is good for me. But it's just so much more enjoyable when you have meaningful games. Unquestionably, and Friday we're one step closer to Saturday, which means they want to fill the broadcasting airwaves with some pretty good games, and we've got them again on tap this week. I think we've got a good, healthy looking Friday card. Yes, and we're going to start uh, with a game that you actually talked about on our Playbook Experts show. Uh, and of course that is, uh, you can check that out, Playbook Experts YouTube channel. Uh, it airs either Thursday night, or actually it usually airs on Wednesday night to Thursday morning, but there's been some scheduling delays based because of the hurricane. And so they've been airing Thursday night slash Friday morning. So that'll be available, Playbook Experts. Uh, and um, uh, anyway, the fact is, is that you mentioned this game uh, and, I, and I'll let you talk about that trend too to set it up because I believe it was a 22 and 0 trend Something like that? Yeah, we're talking inside the Florida State-Duke game Friday night. And, uh, you know, it's not often you'll find a team that has uh, dominated an opponent such as Florida State has to Duke. They beat them 22 years in a row. They were favored in all 22 of those games. And they're dressing up as the underdog here this Friday. And obviously the reason they are is because Florida State is way down this football season here. But I also think it may be an uh, overreaction to the odds maker based upon what's happened here of late. And I call teams like this, I call them Dia Dia, dogs in action, doing it again, dominating dogs as Florida State has been in the series against Duke. Here they are, the underdog in this contest, 22 wins in a row. Until this streak breaks, you have to give me Florida State plus the points against Duke. The pressure's all on the Duke Blue Devils. Yeah, I don't know how many times uh... – I, I keep talking. I keep bringing this up uh, for the past, uh, especially the past couple of years, and it's just. And I keep saying, "Well, it's like eighty percent, ninety percent." Yeah, I keep bringing it up, and it's like a hundred percent. So one of these times, I'm gonna, it's going to lose, and I get that. But they, they just haven't been. And again, what we're talking about is is a team that dominates a series, and they are the dog in the matchup. And we saw it. The biggest example of that was last year, Washington and Oregon. That was the biggest example of it, where Washington beats Oregon in the regular season, and they were the, they had also I think they had a series run, and then they go to the championship game of the conference, and Oregon's a big favorite. They're not only the favorite, they're a ten point favorite. Unbelievable. And that was and that was really a dominating performance by Washington in that game as well. And it wasn't like Washington was down or playing poor football. You know, they were undefeated oh. in the conference themselves. That, that was probably, Greg, arguably the worst line of the college football season when they put out a 10-point favorite to Oregon in that game. Yeah, and that's why I, I just figured, you know, you just can't do that. And then so now this is a much bigger example because of the fact that, like you said, 22 straight, all-time, never lost, 15-6-1 against the spread. And you know what? I know a lot of people might bring up that uh, the starting quarterback for Florida State's out. Hey, I think that might be an advantage because I never liked the kid anyway. And so Brock Glenn, who actually had a pretty good game last week, uh, you know, coming in for DJ uh, and, and does a decent job. I know he's not, you know, a big time quarterback yet. Maybe he never will be. But I'm going to jump all over Florida State here. Uh, they're getting, I believe it's three points and uh, definitely go with Florida State. Well, right. as you mentioned, the DJ alphabet has not been much at all of a quarterback. He's probably been the most disappointing five-star quarterback 
to come out of high school in recent memory here. He's, he's jumped around a couple of different programs, hasn't delivered the goods. It's the same case here at Florida State with no DJ alphabet. Okay. I'll let you handle that. All right. <laughs> uh, let's go to another game that we also talked about on your show. And the more I think about it, the more I'm just going to be the gambler in me. And I'm going to just be a wacky and crazy guy uh, and add this to my double-digit upset plays. And, and, and this is Purdue and Oregon. And the reason I'm going to do this, and I think this is very important for people to understand this, and that is the fact that when I do a double-digit upset play, it's not just because of the fact that I'm sitting there going, oh, I think this oh, upset. I love this team. They're going to upset them. That's why I'm picking them. If there's a strategy to it. There's a strategy, especially now where I think I'm up for the season – at plus 690. So it's a strategy where there are times when I have a game or two that I can I can gamble on and say, yeah, okay, I'm sure Purdue probably not going to beat Oregon. But there are some circumstances in this game that, you know, I, I've seen crazier things, and why not? Because if I hit it at 16 to 1 as a, as a money line dog, I'm sitting pretty basically for the rest of the year in my double digit upset plays. And I can take the chance because I'm up almost 700 bucks on, 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 on you know, in, 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 on my formula. And let's talk about this game and the reason why. And that is because this is, again, you've got yourself um, a situation where Oregon's going to come back to earth emotionally after what happened last week. We all know that they're not just not going to be able to come up with that fire. Purdue. Meanwhile, the new quarterback comes in Ryan Brown uh, and has a tremendous game. Nobody expected it. Threw for over 300 yards, ran for over 100 yards. They lost on a two-point conversion in overtime to a much better Illinois team on the road. So now it's Friday night. Everybody's excited. I know Hudson Card. I've heard that there's a possibility he could play, but it's like, why would you play Hudson Card? I know he's, you know, much talented, more, you know, that's what they, that's what they tell us. At least he's the better quarterback. But Ryan Brown lit a fire and why not let the kid play? So anyway, I just think that because of it, it's also, by the way, the first true, because I'm not going to count the UCLA road game. This is the first true Big Ten road game for Oregon. Well, not a good place to be a good, uh, coming off a big win like they were against Ohio State. And you've also got a game on deck here in this contest here for Oregon against Illinois, an undefeated yeah. football team. So how much – Focus are they going to give to the Purdue Boilermakers? I'd say something close to next to nothing. Uh, people have asked me, will there be a letdown for Purdue here? And my answer is, how can there not be a letdown for Oregon in this football contest? Their high, or their high school and college football age football players here, they will be prone to letting down after big, huge wins. You look at Purdue here, I know they're bad. They're getting out yarded over 200 yards a game this football season here. That's obvious. That's why they're the big dog as they are, home dog like this. But the last 13 times they've been an underdog of 21 or more points. Purdue has won the money 12 of those 13 times. I say it's make it. let's make it 13 and 1 to the spread as Oregon plays down to Purdue's level here. I got to grab the points with Purdue. Yeah, so again, even if you're not going to be a wild and crazy guy like me, just go ahead and take the points. I think that makes a lot of sense. You know what? Maybe what really makes sense is to take first half points. Because, and I'm not one of those guys that does that, but you would think if you're going to win this game, that's the way you're going to win it. Because if, if Oregon comes out on fire, which that's the whole thing that we're working against, that they're going to be a little bit sluggish, that they're just the energy's not going to be there. It's going to take them a little while to get into the game and then, all right, maybe in the second half they go into locker room and they realize, all right, we, we got to step up here, guys. Let's just put this team away. And then maybe they blow them out with a 28-point fourth quarter or third quarter, and that's how they cover. So I don't know about you. Again, I don't do halves, but I guess if I did halves, I, I would probably look at the first half of Purdue as well. I agree with that thinking entirely because – Oftentimes you'll find in letdown games, the other team's feet do not hit the field until the second half. They are still on a cloud and a sky high. And it usually shows in the first half of football games. Yeah. Meanwhile, it's already 28, nothing Purdue. I mean, Oregon. <laughs> all right. So let's go ahead and talk about Oklahoma state and BYU. And this line is starting to get a little bit bigger. Now it's up to about nine and a half. And, uh, this is a, a team BYU, and we talked about this last week, and I thought it was kind of funny, of course, getting all of the comments that I received uh, for picking uh, against BYU. I never thought there were that many BYU fans. Uh, but we pointed out that sooner or later, BYU is not going to be able to come up with four turnovers a game. And sooner or later, they're going to get caught up. 
Well, Arizona wasn't that type of team, and that's just because it continues. They just continue to be a very disappointing team. But tell you the truth, the Big 12 is just a, a wacky conference this year. I mean, it's just up and down uh, how crazy it is this year. And BYU is a big part of it. A lot of people thought BYU would be at the bottom and Oklahoma State would be at top. And now it's almost like the exact opposite what's going on. Keep in mind, though, uh, there's a reason for it, a little bit of a reason for it. We talked about the running back situation at Oklahoma State. Ever since um, the kid wound up with the DUI, he has just not been there focused. Also, Colin Oliver and Nick Martin, the two best defensive players for Oklahoma State, have not been on the field. Uh, and Oliver hasn't been on the field since week two. So that's pretty big. By the way, Oklahoma State 0-3, straight up and against the spread in their last three, including the last two by a combined 80 to 34. So they had just been getting beat up over the last several games. They beat BYU last year at home, but only by six as a 16-point home favorite. So maybe that's a good sign that BYU knows how to beat Oklahoma State, especially when they have a better team. They're 9-1 and one at home against Big 12 competition, BYU is, including 2-0 and oh this year. And they're the, one of the only teams in college football that is 6-0 and oh straight up and 5-0 and oh against the spread. I know it's hard for me to go against BYU the way that they're on a roll right now, but I don't know. It's just awfully tempting to see Oklahoma State as a 10-point dog and getting nearly 3-1 to one on the money line. Well, what a change of direction it's been since the beginning of the season, Greg, here. Uh, if you take a look at the Big 12 preseason media poll at the beginning of the season, Oklahoma State was picked to be the number three team in the conference. Here they're resting at number 13 right now going into this football game because they've gotten off to this rotten start. On the flip side, you take a look at BYU. They were the number 13 pick in the Big 12 <laughs> conference. And how, how they've changed roles here, unbelievably. But what works in this game for me is the, the two things. Number one, the talent is still there for Oklahoma State. They just haven't played up to that level. They've been deeply disappointing. But in my database, if you take a look at 6-0 and college football teams who in Game 7 take on an opponent who got upset as a favorite their previous game, those opponents that got upset – tend to play with anger, and that'll be the case in this particular football game. Oklahoma State was upset as a favorite in their last game. Teams in this role are just 6-19 and 19 to the spread, including 10 straight losses in a row to the wow. spread. Yes. So we'll follow that, uh, that game seven let down here, and we'll take the points with Oklahoma State, and I hope you have them on your potential upset list. Uh, you know, they're, they're almost 10. Again, they got to be double digit. I understand. So Yep. Yeah, so I was thinking about it, um, but uh, I've got enough of them, and I got beat. Okay. I got beat by BYU last week, uh, yep. even though they weren't like one of my top picks. Let's keep that in mind. It was just a game of the week, yes. uh, so I don't want to have the wrath of those BYU uh, uh, viewers again if I were to pick against them. Uh, Fresno State, meanwhile, is the late game at Nevada in the Mountain West, and uh, both teams are fighting for positioning in the Mountain West. Uh, without Tedford, Fresno State's not the same team. Uh, the line's three. Just keep in mind, though, if this line goes to three and a half or more, Fresno State is 0-13 against the spread as a road favorite of more than three following a straight-up ATS loss. So, again, that's if they're three and a half or more. Nevada, meanwhile, first-year head coach Jeff Choate was the defensive coordinator with Texas. He's done a tremendous job with this team this year. They played much better than people have thought, even they're only even though they're only three and four. But they're four and two against the spread, and they're seven and one against the spread off of a dog win, an upset win when they take on an opponent off a straight up ATS loss. And I'm kind of thinking Nevada here to tell you the truth. I know Fresno is a more talented team, but I just think this Nevada team they've got something going this year. What do you see for the line in this football game, Greg? As we're talking here, because uh, I think at the beginning of the season it might have been a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, we're looking at here Fresno State coming in as the dog in this football game. Uh, this is a Nevada football team you couldn't have given away if you wanted to at the beginning of the season because of the rotten year they had last year. And you got Fresno State, a nice 9-2 and two of the spread, coming off a home game against an opponent off a home game. I think this is just a bad role for Nevada to be in here. And I think history plays well for Fresno State in a contest like this. Give me the Bulldogs in this game. All right, so that wraps it up for our Friday night video. We have other videos here on the RLS Football uh, Network, the RLS Football YouTube channel. So check that out. We have an upset uh, watch video. We have our three games of the week in college football in the NFL. 
And uh, we'll talk a lot more about a lot of other topics here. So check out shorts, things of that nature. And check out Mark Lawrence over on the Playbook Experts YouTube channel, including the Playbook, uh, uh, actually the Playbook Against the Spread podcast, which will be available probably by time you watch this video here on our lads. And we'll have a link in the description where you can check all that out. Uh, Mark, appreciate your time as always. Hey, my pleasure as always, Greg. Good luck this weekend.